this is David for Big Bits, and in this video we're going to take a look at the Auto Fibonacci Retracement Indicator added as a built-in indicator on TradingView. A uh, couple of interesting things about it, kind of go over the settings for it and how you can actually uh, add it to your chart and some of the ways you can manipulate it and the way it's shown. Now there is also another update, it's kind of a security setting update with TradingView regarding the, their multi-factor authentication. Now if you know what multi-factor authentication is, you probably don't really care to watch the end of the video regarding that but uh, if you don't know what that is or you need to know where to go to set that up just stay for the end of the video and I'll show you kind of how to go through all of that but to get started let's take a look at the auto Fibonacci retracement indicator now by default it is something you can add by going to the public library actually it is a built-in excuse me click on the built-in section and you can actually find it here auto fib retracement I've now added it to the chart and you can see this is our auto Fibonacci retracement indicator as provided as a built-in indicator now by TradingView now in the past this used to be something you had to draw this was like a drawing tool you would have the Fibonacci retracement drawing tool and you would actually have to specify the points that you were going to use now that one's actually backwards I believe but you get the idea you're gonna to have to draw your particular points with the drawing tool now you would have to move this manually and change the points if you wanted to however with the auto Fibonacci retracement you can add settings to the indicator that will adjust where the lines would draw now there are a couple of other important things to know about this indicator before I get into the settings and the first one is that the source code is available as a built-in indicator so if you wanted to see that you could all you have to do is click on the pine tab and let me move my head out of the way so you can see what's going on hit new and then you can use the auto fib retracement it's basically just a template that's all it is and it'll load the source code over here and you can modify it to however you need to uh, so that's pretty cool itself and let's see I think that is about it for all of those things now this is their blog post regarding the auto fib retracement so if you're curious about reading it you can go to their blog you can also find that information when you go to what's new uh, on TradingView here but I'm gonna bring my head back into the picture there we go I'm trying to see if there's anything else here that we might have forgotten to discuss, but I think that is it. We've shown you how to add the indicator, where it's at, and I did forget to mention you can always search for your indicators. So if you didn't know where to go uh, or you forget that, you can always just search for auto fib and it'll come up in your search results there and you can add it. So now let's take a look at some of the settings for this particular indicator there is a deviation and depth settings these will impact where the lines are drawn from and to for the retracement itself so if you play around with this you'll notice that the lines get drawn differently depending on what depth you have and as always with these indicators once you change the settings it might take a moment to actually recalculate and redraw on the chart itself so even with a depth of four we have pretty much the same values now you'll notice there are some visual elements here that are mostly to do with what you're seeing with the plots so we have the option for extend lines right enabled if you disable that all you're gonna see is the Fibonacci levels uh, between the start and end candle from the selected points that you have now if you check both of them you're gonna have lines going both ways so that one's pretty obvious how to use now if you use reverse it reverses the points so that your zero is now here instead of at the top and your values go up from there so depending on how you want to use it you can choose reverse if you need to now this is another visual thing you can hide the prices and you can also hide the levels so if you're familiar enough with the indicator that you can recognize the levels by color you can just dis disable that and you can also disable the prices as well if you need to if it's too much on the screen now they also have a different levels format um, so this is just kind of a preference thing whatever you'd like to see everything's exactly the same you'll notice 61.8 percent here and I know this text is kind of small but all that really is is 0.618 
when you switch to values that's what the percentage value is so that's just kind of a preference now all of these other check boxes are settings to display the actual level itself so if we did not want to display the 1.272 just uncheck that one and it's no longer on our charts so if there's a level that you don't want to use you can easily remove it or if there's others that aren't being used that you want to add you can you can see I added the 4.236 and that's all the way down around 2.1k for Bitcoin right now so I think that pretty much does it for this particular indicator um, this is something I would like to start using a bit more of. I don't really care for uh, the drawing tools that much. I really like to use the indicators. So this is going to be helpful for me. Now, let's see. The other update was the two-factor authentication. Now, if you're not familiar with two-factor authentication, you probably are. You just don't really know what the, it actually means to say two-factor authentication. That's just basically adding another factor to your authentication or just to your login as you might be uh, more aware of the term so when you go to log in of course you put in your username and password that is the first factor and the second factor in this case can either be a text message to your phone or it can be a one-time password generated by an authentication app now I will take you to my profile and I will show you that when you go to the profile, you can find this in the settings under security. Now there's really nothing for me to hide from you right here. Uh, so I'm going to move my head. I've already enabled this. Uh, what's going to happen if you choose the SMS verification, uh, you're going to have to give it your phone number if it doesn't already have it. It will send you a code. It will ask you to place that code into a text box and hit submit and it will confirm that you do in fact actually have access to that second factor authentication. Now with the Authenticator app, which is what I've done, is when you click to enable this, it will bring up a QR code and a security key. I forget what it's called. Essentially, it's a seed to generate a one-time password and the authenticator apps use that seed to cryptographically come up with the actual uh, second factor authentication value that you're going to put in and in most cases it is a six digit number and once you use an application like Google Authenticator, Duo Mobile, or Authy. Now, there are other applications such as password managers that will manage these for you along with your actual passwords on the actual site. And I actually use one of those that does this as well. So if once the QR code comes up, you can pull up your password manager. And if it has the capability to do it, you can add your one-time password in your password manager. And you can get your one-time password from there. That way you can have a copy uh, and access your one-time password on multiple devices and have a backup of it as well. So with the authentication app, you put in the code that it generates for you automatically then you confirm that it will give you restore codes uh, or I believe it's just extra authentication codes uh, basically it's a series of six words or just random strings I believe that you need to save that in case you lose access to your 2FA you'll be able to place those in and it will allow you to authenticate even without the actual authentication app now it's very important that you keep that uh, very secure and private so that people can't actually get to that uh, if they were to also find your password okay so and the way that's going to change things if you don't already understand is when you log in once you enter your login and your password and it verifies your account information to be accurate it will then also check to see that you have enabled two-factor authentication and then it will detect which type of two-factor authentication you have and then ask you to enter in the correct authentication code or it will send you a text message and tell you to enter in the authentication code from the text message so it's actually pretty simple stuff a lot of people who are new to two-factor authentications it can be confusing especially the authenticator app the SMS verification you probably get stuff like this for like doctor's appointments and other things if you don't already use it for other websites for 2FA but that will do it for this particular video. If you haven't already, please check out my profile on TradingView. You can always check out the scripts 
section, which I have tons of public and open source scripts that you can check out. Uh, several of them now, uh, at least two, have been featured uh, scripts within the community, uh, the fancy triple moving averages, and next up is the fancy Bollinger Bands, which are just very customizable indicators for TradingView. But that will do it for this particular video. If you like the video, please leave a like while you're down there. Also, please consider subscribing because I do videos where we keep up with these changes on TradingView uh, because keeping up with TradingView and actually utilizing this uh, the subscription that I'm paying for is a very good idea. And these tools can also make your life a lot easier. So that's why I like to keep up with that. I also do the Pine Script tutorials and I also share brand new indicators uh, completely free and open source with everyone currently. So thank you for watching and have a great day.